How the Anunnaki knew about our solar system. The race called gods, we know them as Anunnaki, live on a planet called Nibiru. That planet came from outside our solar system. The tablets for this information is in the British Museum. It's called the Enuma Elish, translated by L.W. King. If you want to read this yourself, type in Enuma Elish PDF on Google. Before I explain how the Anunnaki knew about how our universe was formed, we first need to read through the Enuma Elish. I will keep cutting in explaining things. I hope this won't put you off learning about our solar system. The First Tablet When in the height heaven was not named, and the earth beneath did not yet bear a name, and the primeval Apsu, who begat them, and Chaos, Tiamut, the mother of them both. Their waters were mingled together, and no field was formed, no marsh was to be seen. When of the gods none had been called into being, and none bore a name, and no destinies were ordained. It's believed that the Apsu was the sun, our sun in our solar system. There was water in space. This is what NASA says about water in space. Enormous amounts of water, in gaseous form, exist in the vast stellar nurseries of our galaxy. The Hubble Space Telescope peered into the Helix Nebula and found water molecules. Hydrogen and oxygen, formed by different processes, combine to make water molecules in the ejected atmosphere of this dying star. This is the translations from the Moore Hen collection. They are pretty much the same as the Enuma Elish translations, but in an easier format to understand. When it all started in the above, there were no gods in the heavens, and in the below, key, there was no name for the firm ground. Apsu, their first leader, was all alone in the void. In the heights of the above, there were no celestial gods yet, and in the depths of the below, there were no celestial gods either. Apsu ruled the void all by himself. Then, his winds mixed the waters of the beginning, and Apsu cast a divine and clever spell over the waters. He slept soundly in the deep of the void. Tiamat, the mother of everything, became his wife. She, indeed, was a mother from heaven and a watery beauty. The mother of everything isn't the creator of everything. Tiamat was a watery planet. In fact, it was an ice planet. Watch my documentary on the Norse gods, where I explain the Norse myth of a frost giant was in fact Tiamat, the planet. Apsu's little Mumu then gave birth next to him, and he gave Tiamat a gift to bring to him as his messenger. Only she can have a gleaming metal, gold, that lasts forever. We are not sure what Mumu was. It could have been a wormhole, portal, dust, or just a huge sun flare, or something else. Apsu gave this beautiful gift to his wife. Then their waters mixed, and they had divine children to bring into the world. The celestials were created in both male and female forms. Lamu and Lahamu were their given names. Then were created the gods in the midst of heaven. Lamu and Lahamu were called into being. Ages increased. Then Ansar and Kisar were created. I have created a family tree on all the planets and their names, and which planet gave birth to which. Please remember, the Anunnaki, gods, always spoke about objects in heaven, which we know is space, as if they were alive. If these planets had personalities and mouths and eyes, this is just how they spoke about them. The first children of Tiamat was Mars and Venus. I'm not sure how a planet can create more planets, but back then, and I'm not talking about 4.5 billion years ago, that's when Nibiru planet came into our solar system. I'm talking about way back when only the sun was here first. I guess as planets were forming, parts may have broke off, creating smaller planets. And over them, long were the days. Then there came forth Anu, their sun. Apsu and Tiamat constructed a house below. Anshar and Kishar were created in the waters of the above when they were older and taller. You will hear people on the internet talking about the firmament and how we are under a dome, an invisible dome, and above that, 
is water. This is because they don't research. They have took passages from the Bible and made up stories to fit instead of actually going back to the original texts. You'll see soon how this firmament is really the asteroid belt. Ansar and Anu, and the god Anu, Nudimud, whom his fathers, his begetters, abounding in all wisdom. He was exceeding strong, he had no rival, thus were established and were the great gods. But Tiamat and Apsu were still in confusion. They were troubled and in disorder. Apru was not diminished in might, and Tiamat roared, she smote, and their deeds. They were taller than their older brothers. The two were created to be a celestial couple, and they had a son named An in the faraway heavens. He was their scion. The Anunnaki seem to have divided up the solar system into the word heavens. You'll hear shortly how one heaven is inside the asteroid belt, the three planets which includes Earth. There might be seven heavens in our solar system. Kishar and Anshar were Jupiter and Saturn. They had two children planets and was Uranus and Antu was Neptune. Then Antu was brought out, who was Un's equal and would be his wife. Their house was built on the outskirts of the upper waters. This is how, below and above, three heavenly couples were created in the depths. If you are enjoying this, why not watch the full version, which explains how the Anunnaki knew about our solar system. In fact, there's over 150 other long documentaries you can watch. They are on my Patreon page. It's only a couple of pounds, and more content is added every week. Find out why Stonehenge is there. Find out who Yahweh really was. Learn that the crystal skulls are not fake. See Easter Island for what it really is. Understand the mark of the beast and so much more, all with evidence. Head over to patreon.com. Our true history. There's also free documentaries there. Click on collections then free. Watch an hour-long documentary on the Great Flood. Trust me, you won't find this kind of research anywhere else. Thanks for your support. Our true history.